Coming up next on KRTV, the death toll is above 450 after a powerful earthquake rips through Algeria. And showers possible overnight, but sunshine tomorrow should be warming temperatures up quickly. The 10 o'clock news is next. U.S. wide, I think, is, is over half a million Alberta cattle make it in, into the U.S. every year, and a good, like I said, a good majority of those come through here. So, U.S. borders remain closed to Canadian beef until authorities determine yesterday's discovery of mad cow disease was an isolated case. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Janae Town. It's possible more cattle could be infected with mad cow disease. That's the word from Canadian health officials today. Only one cow is known to have the deadly disease, but the U.S. isn't taking any chances. Borders remain closed to most livestock entering the country. The news station's Mia Moran brings us the latest from the Port of Sweetgrass. Daily operations at the Port of Sweetgrass in Montana sound quiet after Tuesday's ban on imports of all cattle and beef-based products. The federal health restriction comes after traces of mad cow disease were found on a farm in Alberta. But state cattle inspectors say the restriction extends beyond beef. Deer, elk, and buffalo as well too. And also includes uh, boxed meat that uh, would be... Uh, along with that in animal derivatives and, and all too, bone meal, things like that. Dr. Jim Becker, the border's veterinarian and livestock inspector, says this discovery could be a major blow to Canadian cattle trade. Uh, Alberta cattle come through, majority of them do come through this port here and, and are inspected here. Dr. Becker typically inspects more than 100 loads of cattle each day. He cautions against overreaction. I think we have the safest food supply in the world here. Something to be aware of, but as far as changing your eating habits and all because of that, no, I, I wouldn't. With the findings coming nearly four months after the infected cow was slaughtered, the long-term effects to the beef industry are still unclear. In Sweetgrass, Mia Moran for Montana's news station. The discovery of mad cow north of the border has many Americans wondering if it's safe to eat beef. Experts say the discovery of the disease is proof the right tools are in place to keep infected meat from hitting the grocery shelves. Montana Farmers Union Executive Director Brooks Daly says consumers should be concerned about the beef they eat, but this could be a good move for the local cattle industry. Uh, the United States, as you know, is, is well known for being the leader in safe, reliable, and consistent food, and we should... Uh, continue along that, uh, that, that line of thinking that we still have a, con uh, a safe and reliable and consistent food source here in the state of Montana. Mad cow is a chronic degenerative disease affecting the central nervous system of adult cattle. While it only affects cattle, a similar illness called creutzfeldt jakob disease is found in humans. There are no reported cases of CJD in the United States, nor do health officials believe any of the country's beef is contaminated. Health officials uh, at the federal level and the state level and here locally have no reason to believe that people are at any increased risk uh, who eat beef products here in the United States. The United States Department of Agriculture does some very rigorous screening of beef and beef products. Mad cow was first diagnosed in 1986 in Great Britain. To date, there have been less than 100 cases of CJD worldwide. Three cases in three weeks, two of them deadly. While hantavirus is rare, state health officials want to get a clearer picture of the situation in Montana. They say the young ages of the two most recent victims shows just about anyone can contract the disease. One of the things that is speculated upon is, you know, their immune systems, because they are highly active functioning immune systems, may play a role in this, and that may make some people progress more. But most of the cases nationally are fairly young, and most of the deaths are. Um, it's young adults predominantly. So it's not really well understood. Health officials say Montanans living or working around rodents, especially deer mice, should take extra precautions. If shortness of breath follows flu-like symptoms, you should contact your doctor immediately. The death toll from a powerful earthquake in Algeria continues to climb. The latest casualty count has at least 459 dead and more than 2,400 injured. Algerian officials believe the numbers will rise as rescue workers find people buried under homes. 
The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake had a preliminary magnitude of 6.7, while Algeria put it much lower at 5.2. The epicenter was about 40 miles east of the capital city of Algiers. America is not only a nation on high alert tonight, it is a nation on edge. Made edgier after an explosion rocked Yale University's law school. The blast caused by some type of explosive device happened in a first floor classroom. No injuries were reported and damage was minor. Several agencies are now investigating the explosion, including the FBI and the Joint Terrorism Task Force. A Great Falls man has lost his appeal with the Montana Supreme Court today. The justices upheld the 1995 attempted murder convictions of Lloyd Meyer. He was sentenced to 80 years in prison for shooting at two men. Meyer challenged the conviction, but the high court ruled he waited too long to bring the issue to the court and that two other witnesses at the trial identified him as the shooter. Governor Judy Martz will undergo surgery tomorrow to deal with nagging problems in her handshaking arm and shoulder. Martz says the procedure will remove calcium growing into the rotator cuff of her right shoulder and a piece of bone from her right arm. Lieutenant Governor Carl Oz will be acting governor for the few hours Martz will be under anesthetic. The governor plans to be out of the office all next week to recuperate. Back home, hundreds of students team up for a big showing of patriotism. It's called Operation Mini Soldier, and it's part of a new freshman program at CMR. Today, the students paired up with third graders at Loyal Elementary to show support for the troops overseas through care packages and other activities. Teachers and students say it's a fun way to take an active role in the community. Different age, age groups and being able to really communicate and bond and know that and so, that our, so our soldiers know that everyone really cares. Not only teaches the kids um, um, you know the academic end of it but it's teaching them real life skills and how to get involved in your community and how to give back to the community and stuff. Members from Malmstrom's Red Horse Squadron were also on hand to build new picnic tables, plant trees and help clean up around school. Still ahead on KRTV, we give you a front row seat at tonight's opening ceremony of the Montana Special Olympic Summer Games in Missoula. But first, for those of you heading, gearing up to head out to your favorite camping spot this weekend, the do's and don'ts of campground etiquette. And later in the sports report, we'll tell you which local Class B teams have the best chance to take a state track title this weekend. And we'll check the highlights from Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals between the Spurs and the Mavs. And in weather, clouds kept temperatures a little lower than expected today. However, some clearing tomorrow should help warm up highs very quickly. Your seven-day forecast is next. Pretty quiet night in the Electric City. Temperatures are cooling off a bit, but we still have some pretty good cloud cover, and that keeps temperatures fairly mild as well. 10 o'clock at the airport this evening in Great Falls. We have 50 degrees, humidity at 69%. There's your winds west at 8, and the pressure 30, 14. It's been rising. High today, 64, low 44. Pretty typical day for this time of the year. Three one-hundredths of an inch of rainfall in the middle of the night last night. And our statistics from around the nation today, the high at Thermal California, 110. Jackson, Wyoming, not far away, got the nation's honor for uh, the low spot of 27 and almost two inches of rain in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 58 at Kalispell today, 50 is the general rule west of the divide. Dillon, a little warmer. Middle of the state, Lewistown, 58, 67 at Haver, 66 at Glasgow, and 61 degrees at Cutbank at 10. It's cooled off to 54 at Glasgow, 50 at Lewistown, 52 at Haver, in the upper 40s at Cutbank with 47 degrees. We are seeing some moisture west of the divide. That's drying up quickly, now moving into the southern part of the state. Around Great Falls, we have a chance of maybe seeing an isolated shower overnight. It's not all that great, though. 66 at Seattle today, 74 for a high at Portland. Salt Lake City, 80 degrees in Denver. Their temperature at 76, 71 at Cheyenne, and 70 at Gillette. As we look at tomorrow, high pressure in place. We're kind of at the edge of some clouds and maybe a little bit of moisture in the morning. Hopefully that high pressure will push the uh, sunshine back into our area. There is a melting advisory. We're calling this for warm weather this weekend as we go into holiday weekend. 
central Montana up along the Rocky Mountain front. Rising creeks and streams are expected along the front, also the Little Belts and the southwestern part of Montana. Keep that in mind if you're out doing some camping. Highs today, 107 at Phoenix, 70 degrees at Wichita, 62 at Duluth, 60 in New York City and Miami with a temperature of 87 degrees. We're seeing some showers associated with a front across the eastern seaboard and also some rain showers moving through the Dakotas this evening, some of those heavy in places. Our forecast lows tonight quite mild because of the cloud cover, browning 37, 39 at Cut Bank, almost 40 at Shelby, we'll call it 39. 20% chance of seeing some showers overnight. You may get some showers in the morning as well. Hopefully we'll clear some of this off in the afternoon and see 70 for high at Shelby, a little cooler at Cutbank with 64 and about the same at Browning. Forecast for the Haver area this evening, cloudy, 42 at Haver, 42 at Big Sandy and about the same at Chester with 41. You have a 20% chance of some light showers, morning showers lingering on and then hopefully we can clear some of these clouds out of the way tomorrow. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s, 74 the warmest for high in Haver. For the northeastern part of the state, Glasgow partly cloudy, mid 40s at 44, Seiko the same, about 45 degrees at Malta. Tomorrow, lack of moisture in your area, temperatures pleasant, 72 at Glasgow, 72 at Seiko, 73 at Malta. A few more clouds in this 10% is really just a sprinkle and not even a shower if you see that. Here's the forecast for Lewistown, 41 for a low, 40 at Stanford, 42 at Belt. Slight chance of seeing some showers overnight, slight, we might emphasize that tomorrow in the morning we could see some showers, but by afternoon we're looking at sunshine. 70 seems to be the norm. 69 at Lewistown, Stanford at 68 and around 70 degrees at Belt. Mostly cloudy with some isolated showers possible in Great Falls tonight. It's only 10 to 20 percent, mainly closer to 10. Overnight low temperature down to 43. Tomorrow we do have a 20 percent chance of a shower in the morning. Partly sunny skies in the afternoon and warmer. High temperature of 72 as we go through the seven-day outlook. I suspect as you see these temperatures, there'll be more planning going on and planning for camping as well. Saturday and Sunday up into the mid-80s, maybe a chance of some holiday showers or thunderstorms. High temperatures on Tuesday and Wednesday still in the mid-70s. Here's a great spring shot from Mabel Suda of Shelby. Of course, reminding us of the growing season that's just getting started here right. in the Electric City in north central Montana. So it looks like maybe some good a good weekend to do some planting then. Well, it looks like a great weekend to do just about anything. Right, Seldom do we get really nice holiday weekends, and this looks to be a dandy. Okay, so take advantage, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, Fred. Well, this weekend, many Montanans will do just that, pack up and head out to their favorite camping spots. But before you go, the news station's Maura Seafrain has more on campground safety and some guidelines that will help make your outing more enjoyable. Adrenaline is up and spirits are high, with summer about to begin. But in order to make the most of your time outdoors, being properly prepared to camp is a vital component. Make sure you have the right gear, looking at the weather report. Vital to having a great time. We're all there to, to recreate and relax, and uh, we don't want anything to stand in the way of that. In addition to having the right gear and calling ahead for information, consideration for your fellow camper is also essential. Keep in mind that pets may be better left at home or should always stay on a leash. And by 10 p.m., keep the noise down, especially generators. Also remember to take care of the land that you're using. Just be good stewards. Oftentimes we have problems with, with bears in dirty campsites. Uh, other rodents are coming in. Keep a clean camp, not only uh, for your benefit, but for the benefit of the folks who are following you. A safety measure that cannot be forgotten is the prevention of fires. You can never be too careful when building a campfire or using a grill. Never let your guard down while cooking. I know it's a good time. You're, you're out there to uh, enjoy the outdoors, but you have to be safety conscious as well all the time. Never, ever leave it unattended. The bottom line here is common sense when it comes to safety. Following guidelines don't impede on a good time. They only help to make it better. From Helena, Maura Seifring reporting for Montana's news station. Wall Street ended the day up. The Dow advanced 25 points, thanks in part to a cautious economic outlook by the Federal Reserve. Here are the day's results.